שלום עליכם, my dear friends. The Shabbat that's coming upon us, Be'ezrat Hashem, is Shabbat in which we will read Parashat Vayeshev, but above everything, we are celebrating beginning tonight the lighting of the menorah and we usher in the festival of Hanukkah. So we are going to discuss, of course, uh, the, the parasha, which begins with the words Vayeshev Yaakov and Yaakov, our father Jacob, finally, after all the tribulations of his life, is now going prepare, preparing himself to be to live a, cal- a life that's calm and tranquil at the same time of course uh, we will mention if not much but something about Hanukkah relating to this parasha so let us begin Parashat Vayeshev, as I said, begins with Vayeshev Yaakov. Our sages explain, as written in Rashi, Bikesh Yaakov li yishev b'shalva, kafatz alav rugzo shel Yosef. Once Yaakov finally wanted to sit and to dwell, to dwell in, the, in the land of his forefathers, uh, he wanted to finally rest. But suddenly, a tragedy has exploded upon his life. The matter of his son, Yosef, his beloved son, as described in this coming parasha. Yosef, the son of Rachel, his beloved wife, the wife of Yaakov, of course. Because of the jealousy between his brothers and him, the brothers decided first to kill him. I don't want to go about the reasons, it's all written in the parasha, the dreams of Joseph, which you might have think that he, that Yosef is planning to become the king of all of the whole family. And therefore they decided to take Yosef and to throw him in a, in a pit to be killed. Later on they changed their mind, Yehuda succeeded to change their mind. Let us sell him to the Ishmaelim. And indeed they succeeded to put him in the pit, the poor boy, who was sold to the Ishmaelim. Later on it was sold by the Ishmaelim to the Midianim. And finally Yosef ended up in Egypt as a servant of Potiphar, when one of the big people in Egypt, poor Yaakov Avinu, our father Jacob, his most biggest love was Yosef. Kiben Zekunim Hulo. At the time, he was the last one. Before Ibn Yamin, he was the last one. So therefore, he really was beloved very much by his father. Especially that he came from his beloved Rachel, his first love. And then he made for him a special jacket, which apparently, even though we know there are many mysteries about that, but apparently the fact that Yaakov Avinu gave more attention to Yosef by giving him more beautiful things and so forth, so that drew the jealousy of the brothers and unfortunately it ended with such a tragic way which is very difficult to understand how brothers could behave in such a way against their young brother. But that's what happened. There are mysteries in our Torah, in the stories of the Torah. Take it from me, it's not as we read it. There is the plain story, but there is what's inside. What's inside is not easy to explain. Our sages come and try to explain to us that the brothers knew what they were saying. They were convinced that what they are doing is the right thing to do religiously and so forth. But at the end, we know that 
we know that they realized that they were in that they committed a grave error. But it was too late. Yosef was already a servant in Egypt, and he also, the poor boy, has suffered when he was only 17 years of age when he was sold, and then and thank God that God gave him charm and grace in his eyes. And thus, wherever he was, even though he was a slave or a servant, but in a way he was given great honors, even in, the, in jail, where he spent uh, several years because of the story of the wife of Potiphar. The issue is not to tell you now the whole story. It's all written in the parasha. But what I would like to say is what our sages said. Bikesh Yaakov, Yaakov finally wanted to take a rest. As we are going to describe the life of Yaakov, and then suddenly tragedy had fallen upon him. Our sage said that everything that happened to Yaakov, our father, happened to the Jewish people throughout all the generations. Let's see the history of Yaakov, our father Jacob. First, we know about the, the fact, you know, the blessing that he got from Yitzchak, his father, which was designated to be for Esav. Uh, ya Yaakov took the, the great benediction. He took the birthright. And all this, of course, drew the jealousy of Esav and his terrible hatred to the point that he swore to practically kill him. Well, since then Yaakov Avinu could not be at rest. Then his mother Rivka told him, go out and run away to Haran, outside of the land of Israel, of Canaan, and stay with Lavan. This way you can avoid a confrontation with your brother Esav, who, who is plotting to destroy you. And Yaakov went out. Our sages said he did not go directly to Lavan, to Haran, to the place of Haran, which is in Babel. Our sages say that Haran is Babel. But he went to the yeshiva of Shem Ever. He spent there 14 years without even the possibility of having a sleep. We learn this from this, the teachings of our sages based on the Pasuk that we read in Parashat Vayetze, Vayivgaba Makom Vayalen Sham Kiba Hashemesh, that Yaakov Avinu, after a long journey, and after the 14 years in which he did not sleep at all, and then finally when he came to that place when he had the famous dream that God was above him, it says there in the verse, Vayishkav Bamakomahu, and finally he spent the night he slept for the first time after 14 years. That shows already that Yaakov doesn't have an easy life. All right, but that's not enough. Now he went on. He went to Lavan. He wanted Rachel. Okay, come and be my, my servant. Work for me for seven years to get Rachel. He worked seven years. He didn't get Rachel. Because Lavan cheated him. He sent him Leah at a time in which Yaakov did not discover until the next morning. It was too late already. He spent the night with Leah. It's his wife. When he hollered that Lavan, what have you done to me? I have worked for you for seven years for Rachel and I find out you gave me Leah. Lavan says, I'm sorry, but what can I do? We cannot. Leah is, uh, is older than Rachel. We don't start by uh, uh, marrying someone younger than the, the older one. You want to Rachel also? No problem, give me another seven years. Yaakov served Lavan, worked for him diligently with all the honesty that only our father Yaakov had for Rachel. And finally he got Rachel. After 14 years of work, he got Leah and Rachel. And then he gave another seven years of work so that he can come out from Lavan with some goods, with him. I cannot come out as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a poor man. And that's what happened. 21 years of hard work. 
אז היא הימסלף סט טו לבן, הייתי ביום אכלה לי חורה וקרח בלילה. Every night in the day I didn't care about the heat, at night I didn't care about the cold, and I worked with honesty, making sure that no one of your animals, of your lambs and your cows and your share, uh, 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 your herds, that nothing should, uh, should be missing. I stood for him so that he should not lose anything. I served with a tremendous kind of honesty. So, finally, Yaakov comes out with his large family, two wives. Uh, by then, uh, how many children? I think 11 children, right? And now and he has a big and, and, and a lot of many possessions. That he comes out, he comes out very nicely. You think that's it. Everything is fine. He's going to finally enjoy his life. Yeah, but now he is, has to be confronted with Esav, his brother. Again, the fear to confront with Esav. Prepared himself properly, as we have described last week. Preparing a nice gift for Esav. And then he prayed to God that he should save him. And at the same time, he prepared himself to have a war against his brother Esav, who was coming towards him with 400 people. Thank God the story ended up peacefully and nicely. Yaakov gave him many things and they came out after they hugged each other. Uh, apparently peace, peace has been established, but only for a while, our sages said. All right, still Yaakov now is out, finally. But in the city of Shechem, his daughter Dina, the only daughter that he had, was taken by the son of Hamor, who was the leader of uh, the city of Shechem, and uh, he apparently raped her, but fell in, uh, fell in love with her, and he wanted to marry her. And when the city, when the people of, Sedo, of, uh, of Shechem, they came to uh, ask for Dinah to be given to her to his son. Of course, uh, Yaakov is not going to say yes. So they said to him, listen, we cannot marry you because you don't do circumcision. We do circumcision. We cannot take someone without being circumcised. And Shechem and Hamor and all the city, yes, we are willing to circumcise ourselves. As long as you mingle with us and you, this, this way we can give you our daughters and you give us your daughters. And that's it. They said, fine. But it was a lie. Shimon and Levi, two brothers, they waited for them after that circumcision. On the third day when it is the most difficult, in, a, in accordance with the Midrash, they went into the city and they killed everyone. Two brothers had the power to kill a whole city because of what they have done to their sister. How dare he do this to our sister? Yaakov Avinu, of course, had a hard time. He said, why have you done this? Because now the nations are going to... Uh, surrounding us, that they are going to hate me even more. Thank God it did not happen. Yaakov finally goes with his family to the land of Canaan. Finally, he wants to rest. Can he rest? No. Kafatz alav rugzo shel Yosef. That's the beginning of this parasha. Vayeshev Yaakov, and he sits, he wants... Finally, he went through everything. Terrible things, terrible life. Now he deserves to rest. That's the time when the tragedy of Yosef occurred. The biggest tragedy for Yaakov Avinu. Unbelievable. So now the question is, why is that a tzaddik, a righteous man like Yaakov, has to suffer so much? What is the answer that the Gemara, that the Talmud offers? Lo dayan la tzaddikim laem be'olam ba. Why, it's not enough the great pleasure that's awaiting the righteous people, the people of Israel in the world to come, that they want also to live peacefully and tranquilly in this world? Now, what kind of remark is this? 
What is so wrong about giving a peaceful life to a righteous person in this world, even if he is going to have the greatest pleasure in the world to come? But why should he suffer in this world? On the contrary, if he is a righteous man, give him a nice life. This way he will be able to dedicate more time of his life to the worship of God, to the, world, to the study of Torah and the, the observance of the mitzvot. Well, remember what we said. Everything that happened to Yaakov, our father, happened to the Jewish people. Yaakov is the symbol of the Jewish people. That's why his name is also not only Yaakov, but also Yisrael. The story with the angel, of course. Everything that happened to Yaakov happened to the Jewish people. I mean, let's see what happened to the Jewish people. Jewish people. The career of the Jewish people started as terrible slavery in Egypt for 210 years. A terrible, cruel slavery happened upon the Jewish people. Yaakov Avinu went to Mitzrayim, joining his, uh, his son Yosef, we became the king of Egypt or the viceroy of Egypt. And all the children of Yaakov came and have luxury life in Egypt. They became extremely admired and beloved and everything until another monarch came to be the next paro in Egypt. And that's when the terrible things started. And that's when hatred started. Unbelievable. I mean, uh, these people are the advisors of Pharaoh, they said, listen, the Jewish people in Egypt have prospered and now there are very, very many of them here. Many hundreds of thousands were living in the land of Egypt by the time. So if we wait any longer, one day they will conquer our land. And that's when they decided First they started by destroying every male, every Jewish male, together with every, every male that has been born. As long as they can get, get rid of the Jews. Later on, of course, I'm not going to tell you the whole story as we are going to read in before Shemot, after Shemot, you know. And the Jewish people was put into a terrible slavery for 210 years in accordance with the prophecy that God said to Abraham, our forefather Abraham, He said to Abraham Avinu, you should know that your descendants are going to have to be slaves in the land that is not theirs, did not say the land of Egypt, and they will be enslaved there. And that's what happened. The Talmud in Masichet Shabbat on page 89, we find there an interesting uh, dialogue between God and the people of Israel in the world of the souls, in, in the world to come. Because God is telling, as the Talmud says, the God is telling the Jewish people, go to Abraham. Maybe if they can find something to say to you, to rebuke you maybe. They said, no, we don't want to go to Abraham. Why? Because the day when you came and you told him about the future slavery of the Jewish people, he knew about that. How come he did not pray that it should not happen? So he said, okay, go to Yaakov, your father Jacob. No, he also went to Egypt he didn't, and he knew because he had the Spirit of God in him. So he knew what's going to be in the future. We are going to be enslaved. He did not pray for us. So anyway, and then the story there tells us about Yitzchak, spoke nice about the Jewish people, as though they are the children of God, not only the children of Yitzchak. So finally, the Jewish people refused to go to the forefathers, which means, so God says, that means you are now counting only on me. You have no other help. Not even your forefathers. Your fathers cannot help you. Therefore, you count on me. If you count on me, then I have no choice. Then I will forgive all your sins 
since time immemorial, since time of the creation, until today, your sins will be forgiven. Even if your sins will become as red as uh, scarlet wool, which is a symbol of sin, still they will become white as snow. Those are the words of Isaiah in chapter 1. Uh, which is a promise to the Al of the Almighty that he will forgive the Jewish people. Very nice. But in the meantime, the Jewish people in this world are suffering. Yes, in a way, our say based on the explanation of the Midrash and our sages, there is uh, one verse in the book of Job, of Eov, chapter 3 where it says, where Iob is complaining and saying, Lo shalavti velo shakati velo nachti. I did, not take, I did not rest at all in all my life. Our sages explain, Lo shalavti, shalavti from the word shalva, tranquility and calm. From es, so that's Yaakov. He's the symbol of, of the suffering of Yaakov. Lo shalavti me'esav. I did not have her rest, no rest. Because of Esav. Lo shakati from my suffering in Babel, you know, re referring to the Jewish people. Uh, what about Velonachti uh, from what I suffered because of Dina, my daughter, his daughter that has been taken by Shechem? And uh, finally, Vayavorogez and the biggest. Anger upon me came with the tragedy of Yosef. So we see how what happened to Yaakov happened to the Jewish people. The Jewish people, the, the Yaakov suffered the way we have described. I mean, in a way, exactly like the suffering of the Jewish people. The Jewish people started with the slavery in Egypt, right? 210 years of slavery. After that, there was a great redemption, no question about it. I mean the ten plagues in Egypt, the splitting of the sea, and then the great redemption. But then again, immediately after the redemption, four years in the wilderness, they were not easy, with all the miracles that, that Hashem brought upon them, with the manna coming, out, coming in. Still, four years in the wilderness is not easy. All right, now they are in the land of Israel, ready to conquer. Seven years of conquest. Not easy, but finally the land of Israel came, as promised, to the hands of the Jewish people. The Jewish people sit now and rest. Rest? is no rest. Up to the time of King David, there were many problems. The Jewish people had good times and bad times. Through the Philistines, they were all the time harassed with, uh, by the enemies surrounding the land of Israel. No question about it. King David finally decided that we should build Bet HaMikdash, the house of the Lord. Not even King David, who is the one who initiated the idea of building Bet HaMikdash, not him, not to him was given the, 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 the merit to build it, because he himself was very much occupied and busy with the war that he led for years against the Philistines. Yes, he had all of them, he had victory, but still it's not easy. Life is not easy. Finally, King Solomon, the son of David, is building the house of the Lord. And several years, four years, there was tranquility and calm among the people of Israel. Do you think by that it's over? No. More tribulations and more problems that finally ended up with the destruction of the first temple and the terrible massacre of Nebuchadnezzar and his armies and he took uh, a large, uh, I mean, uh, uh, a very important part of the Jewish people to his lands and the majority of the Jewish people was out already of the land of Israel very hard time Seven, 70 years okay a short time, so to speak. Seventy years, now it was at the time the most of the population of the Jewish people was in Persia. Not Persia per se, it was Babylon, but under 
the royalty of Achashverosh and Koresh and Daryavish. Finally, Koresh, the king of Persia, is giving permission to the Jewish people to go back to the land of Israel and to rebuild the temple. Oh, very nice. He was not easy also. 50,000 Jews prefer to go to the land of Israel, whereas the majority of the Jewish people prefer to remain in Persia. Why? There was some kind of prosperity, and they want to, to rest. So it was not easy for them to decide to the land of Israel, which was at the time was desolate, empty of people, full of uh, savages and, uh, and uh, wild beasts. Yet we have 50,000 who went under the leadership of Nehemiah and, and Yehud Tzadaka Kohen and Zerubbabel. They are built after 21 years of attacks all the time. They succeeded to build the second temple. And the second temple lasted 410 years. Okay. In the meantime, the land of Israel is being revived again. The Jews are coming all over. And thank God, we have again a, a land of ours in our hands. Of course, during these days, that does not mean that they, well, they were full of rest and, and calm. No, it was a time of Greece. Greece was against the Jewish people. There was an, they, were, they, gave, they gave an autonomy to the Jewish people. They still had the Beit HaMikdash. But the Greek people, they, they dominated the world and they wanted the Jewish people to stop practicing Judaism. Or at least the most important part of, the, the, the religious part of, Jewish, of, of Judaism, such as observing Shabbat, performing circumcision, and other things. The Jewish people refused. That was the time of Matatiyahu and the time of the Hashmonaim for which we are going to celebrate Hanukkah beginning tonight. And this Shabbat that's coming, Parashat Vayeshev, is also Shabbat of Hanukkah. And we light eight days, we light uh, candles with oil. Right? Why? Because the Jewish people, after years of dominion of the Greeks upon them in the land of Israel, they raised an army under the leadership of Yehuda Maccabi and the, a small army against the mightiest army in the world. And God gave them victory, a tremendous victory. In the meantime, Bet HaMikdash was all contaminated. The, the Greeks have, have defiled it all the way. And when finally they, they had the, the great victory, the first thing they did was to go and start again the service of the temple. How? By lighting the menorah. But you have to light with pure oil. There is no pure oil. Everything was contaminated. But they found a little jar of, of oil which will not suffice, which will not be sufficient, not even for one day, but just a little. Now they need oil. Where, where can they bring it? Pure oil from Modi'in. It takes them four days to go, four days to come back. That's eight days. In the meantime, there was a miracle. They succeeded to light the menorah with the first, with a little bit of oil that they had that was pure. And with that, they succeeded to light for eight days that were necessary for those days. And that was the great miracle, which represented, of course, the, the, the Chag Hanukkah, the festival of Hanukkah. Now the Jewish people had again a king, the kingdom of the Hashmonaim. It went on for 200 years. Nevertheless, they did not rest. All this time they did have wars and problems between the brothers and no time to tell you everything. Finally, the second temple was destroyed. The second temple, the glory of the Jewish people, was destroyed by whom? By Rome. At the time, the world was dominated by Rome. And Rome, they finally, after years of fighting against the Jewish people, and the Jewish people did well, but it was not enough because we also had internal problems among us. 
And finally, the second temple was destroyed and the Jewish people were massacred and many of them were taken in captivity and of course the remains they went everywhere they went to Babel no rest no rest whatsoever but somehow wherever the Jews go with all the problems that were presented before them nevertheless they succeeded to have a life and most of all to continue with Jewish life after the destruction of the temple under the leadership of Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai they started in the city of Yavne, small city, but that's when the, the Torah again was revived. And Rabban Gamliel and the sages of the Mishnah, the sages of the Talmud. After the sages of the, the Mishnah, several generations with the sages of the, of the Gemara. And finally, the time of the Geonim, right, which lasted while the Jews, most of them were in the land of Babylon. And other lands, no one, no Jew was in the land of Israel anymore. Maybe a few. The time of the Geonim, Rabbi Sa'adiyah Gaon, Rabbi Sherir Gaon, for about 800 years. And then began the time of the Rishonim. And in all this time, two tribulations and problems for the Jewish people, no rest at all. But somehow the Jews succeeded to continue with their religious life in the light of the Torah, of course, and the observance of the mitzvot. And the time of the Rishonim, the time of Rabbi Yitzchak Al-Fasi, the Rambam, the Ramban, Rashba, and so many great Torah scholars, because of them the Jewish people continue to exist and to learn Torah. Yeshivot in Babel, Yeshivot everywhere, Yeshivot in Spain, Yeshivot in Morocco, and thank God the Torah goes on, but the Jewish people no rest, no rest for them. And they go on until they made up a very beautiful population, successful population in everything in Spain. For about 500 years, Jews lived in Spain with great prosperity. Although there were, of course, problems here and there, but at the same time, the Jews finally, they think that they can rest. In 1492, the terrible exile of the Jews from Spain ruined everything again and here you see again the Jews going one part goes to this land the others to the another land and so forth those go to Ashkenaz country the others go to Sephardic countries and in most of the places they were not accepted so they continue with their exile until finally they find some kind wherever they go they find prosperity they find but no rest Finally, in 1917, the declaration of Balfour, the Jews have the right to come back to the land of Israel. So you think finally all the problems are finished, no? But then Hitler becomes the ruler of Germany and he swore to eradicate the Jewish people. And yet the Jews did not believe they could have escaped. No. They, be, they loved very much the prosperity that they have in Germany and other places. It cost us dearly. Six million Jews perished between 1938 to 1945. The biggest tragedy that ever happened to the Jewish people. But then, 1948, the State of Israel has been inaugurated. So, you say, we can finally rest. No. Immediately after the inauguration with Ben Gurion and all the people that we know. But we were immediately the Jews are surrounded with the, with Arab armies. Yes, there was great victory, no no question about miracles upon miracles, no question about it. But those miracles did not mean to say that the Jews did not lose people. Or did not suffer? Of course, they continue to suffer. Today, thank God, the Jewish people, a big chunk of the Jewish people is in the land of Israel, millions of Jews. And we have an army with which we can lift our, our heads towards the nations. 
but still anti-Semitism continues. We are still surrounded by Arab countries. And the problem is that we all, all the time we think, the Jews think that that's it, finally we are, t we are going to rest. No way. I mean, in Germany, when we lost six million Jews in Europe, that was the most terrible blow to the Jewish people. That was the tragedy of Yaakov when he, when he thought he lost his son Yosef. But then, after that, God allows it, the, the Jews to come back finally to their land, the historical land of the Jewish people. Up to today, the Jewish people is not resting. Yes, thank God, better than any other time in the last 2,000 years. But we should not think that our rest is only a gift that God is giving us. Because the real life of the Jewish people is in the world to come. Believe it or not. So what do we have in this world? The Jew must expect not, not full prosperity, impossible. Bikesh Yaakov liyishev b'shalva, kafatz alav rukzo shel Yosef. When the Jewish people thinks that that's it, everything is fine now, we can be, we can rest, that's when something else occurs. Of course, we hope and pray. You see, we are going to celebrate Hanukkah tonight. What do we do in Hanukkah? We light one candle the first, the first night, one candle with a shamash. And then the second night, two candles. And three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight. On the eight days, eight candles are lighted on a menorah. What does it mean? Why is it that we symbolize that great victory, which did not bring... Uh, uh, any stop to all the tribulations and suffering of the Jewish people. But the Jewish people, the existence of the Jewish people, that's the point. It's because of the suffering of the Jewish people that we still exist. It's because of the Torah we still exist, because of the mitzvot. What is a candle? A candle means fire and it means light. The fire destroys, that is true but it also gives light. The fire is the hatred with which we are surrounded by the nations since time immemorial. But the light of our Torah, as it says in the book of Proverbs, Kiner mitzvah the Torah or, the candle is the mitzvah, is the, observ the observance of the commandments. The Torah, but the Torah itself is or, the light. The light is life. I mean, what is the essence of life of the whole creation? The first creation was light. Vayomer Elohim Yehi Or. Vayi Or. Our light, the Jewish light, is the, the light of Torah. And believe it or not, but it is because of the Torah that we are still in existence. If the Jewish people is in existence, the, the, the rest of the world is in existence. If God forbid there is no Jewish people, there is no world at all. That's something that is clear in our writings. So now we understand that we are the cause of existence of the world, and yet we ourselves, our existence is always in jeopardy. Reminds me of the story of in the Talmud of Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa. Our sages said that God says the whole world gets its sustenance because of my son Hanina. And yet my son Hanina himself, all he gets is very poor. All he gets is a little bit of carobs between one week and another. Unbelievable. The Jewish people's existence, I mean the, whole, the existence of the whole world depends on the existence of the Jewish people in accordance with our writings. But at the same time, the Jewish people has suffered more than any other nation in the world. Why is that? Because we are like Yaakov Avinu, our forefather Yaakov. Because Yaakov Lishev Beshalva, Kafatz Alav Shel Yosef, the Jewish people cannot expect full prosperity unless if you are surrounded with Torah and mitzvot. And so far, 
we still have a great part of the Jewish people who is not observing the mitzvot, unfortunately. So, we still have to suffer. Nevertheless, as we have seen the history, the history of the Jewish people going phase after phase in front of our eyes, through the books and through the history of the Jewish people, we have seen it. We have finally arrived to some time that we can call perhaps, relatively talking, rest, a restful time, but still surrounded with enemies and the nations still hate us. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai said, in, as brought in the Talmud, make no mistake about it. It's a law of nature that Esav hates Jacob. That the world is Esav. The world doesn't like the Jewish people. Why? Because you know why? The, the world knows the truth. And they know that where is the truth is on, only among the people of Israel. I heard it with my own ears from a priest in America who saved me, God bless him, but who told me himself, he said, you are the nation of God. And I heard it from an Arab driver who drove me to a certain place in Jerusalem who told me, we know that you are the truth. It is possible that because they know we are the truth, that's why they don't like us. But we keep hoping, as we know what is Hanukkah, the light of Hanukkah. Since Baruch Hashem, today we have a lot of light of Torah in the land of Israel and everywhere in the world, wherever Jews are, there are many yeshivot, many students of Torah. So we hope and pray that this is coming to some kind of end, as promised by the prophets. As it happened after this, after the, the, the redemption of, of, the, of the Jews from Egypt, from their slavery, and the splitting of the sea, thus shall be also the last redemption, bigger also in its miracles, bigger than the previous uh, redemption, shall be the, the redemption that's coming possibly in our days. So let us pray. Let us become better Jews, good Jews, by learning a little bit of Torah every day, by doing mitzvot as much as we can, because that's our existence, that's our life. And we hope and pray that perhaps when the Mashiach will come, when the King Mashiach will come and we have finally a King Mashiach and rebuilding our Mikdash, perhaps we will enjoy finally the proper prosperity, tranquility, and calm. Shabbat Shalom and Happy Hanukkah, my friends.